everyone, this is Catherine O'Connell and welcome to Lawyer On Air. If you are looking for inspirational stories about women in law, then this is the podcast for you. Join me and my lawyer ladies as we enjoy a glass of wine after a hard day at work and talk about the world of women in law. It's my passion to share stories of amazing legal ladies who are working as in-house legal counsel, who have law firm roles, who are leading on boards and who are doing law differently. From time to time, I will also invite special guests on the show to share their insights on legal recruiting and tips for getting hired as a successful lawyer in Japan. I hope you will enjoy getting to know these amazing women who I am so proud to share a profession with. I'm glad you're here and I hope you enjoy the show. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Lawyer On Air podcast. In this episode, I share with you another diverse story of a woman working in the law in Japan. I'm Catherine, the host of the show, and I'm a lawyer based in Tokyo for more than 20 years, and I love helping unlock the wisdom of the stories that women lawyers never tell. What I've learned in my career so far in law is it's important to understand the work that I am doing and how it connects to client satisfaction and how it facilitates communication. Those are the words of Yasuko Tanaka, who is my guest today on the podcast. Yasuko is president and CEO of her own business called S Cube. She is a patent attorney and an IP business consultant. Yasuko graduated from Chiba University in biochemistry and began working in her first career in the IP department of a Japanese company. And then her second and third companies were not multinationals. She stepped away from her last company in March 2013, pivoting to launch her own venture. And in April of that year, she began her IP business consultancy. It was this entrepreneurial journey that attracted me to her and initiated my invite to come on the show. Her unique pathway for a career is an adventurous one and I wanted people to hear about it so they could learn about this yet another way to live your life as a lawyer. Her mission is to improve the global competitiveness of Japan by leveraging intellectual property as a business advantage and the development also of human resources. You can check out Yasuko's full bio in the show notes. On this episode, Yasuko shares how being brave has been the key to her taking her next step at each pivoting point in her career. This word pivot is a word we hear often these days, especially during and post pandemic. But to me, pivoting isn't just about making one move. It's the product of many micro movements of taking small and experimental steps towards what's next. If you want to pivot, you need to see it as an action and treat it as a verb. And this is what Yasko has done. And you can hear all about it, her pivots in this episode. She also shares how the key to breaking barriers in communication as a Japanese patent attorney is not just about knowing English language, but it's about understanding the other person's culture. That is easy to say, but harder to do. And Yasuko gives a couple of examples how understanding US culture was key for her, especially when she found herself in the US on the day of 9-11. You'll also hear Yasko's super practical advice about starting your own business. It's not for everyone, and she recommends doing that at a certain stage of your life. And Yasko also shares her hot tips on her favorite food, a person from history she would love to meet, and the latest TV drama, which features an IP lawyer as the hero of the story, which is making IP the hot area of law to work in right now in Japan. Let's get into it. Hello, Yasuko, and welcome to the show. Hello, Catherine. Thanks for having me today. Oh, I'm super pleased to have you here. It seems a long time since I saw you, but actually it was only a couple of months ago. So I'm glad that you're able to come on the podcast and be very brave to do that. Oh, thank you for saying that. All right, well, let's get started with the first question. If we were meeting up again in person, 
uh, where would we be? Do you have a favorite wine bar or restaurant or cafe that you love to go to? And what is your choice of beverage from the menu? Actually, I have one favorite restaurant. It's a French restaurant close to our office. It is named Mistorale. M I S T R A L E. Maybe in English, Mr. Rail. Yes. French restaurant, yes. relatively new, and it's right behind the Holland Embassy. Oh, I see. Right. And yeah. what do they have there that you really like? I like red wine. Yes. So I、mm. trust. The sommelier there, <laughs> so I will ask him, "What should I drink today?" Right, and do they serve the red wine at room temperature? Because sometimes in Japan,、mm -hmm. red wine is served quite chilled. I see. Yeah, they serve a、uh, good temperature. Yeah, yeah, I would say so since they're French restaurant. But sometimes it surprises me when、yeah. I. A red wine comes out and it's a little chilled, and I right. I agree. I don't know where that tradition came. It from. shouldn't be too chilly. <laughs> no, you can't taste it otherwise, right? Right. Okay. Like Pinot Noir. Yes, I love Pinot as well. Well, we, let's go there sometime. It sounds like it's lovely. It's a new restaurant. They would like、mm -hmm. to have people going there and spreading the word, so we can meet up there anytime. Of course. Great. Well. I want to go back to when you were really quite young, perhaps when you were a child, or you know, coming into your young adult years. Do you remember what you were thinking about or dreaming about for the future? Then maybe you even thought about a career that you wanted to do. I actually would never imagine I was going to be a lawyer. I didn't know even what a lawyer was. I didn't have an exact dream what I want to be, but sometimes I thought I wanted to be a nurse or a teacher. That is because my aunt was a nurse, and for the teachers, my grandfather told me always that teacher was a good job. That's why I wanted to be a nurse or a teacher. Oh, okay. So, from there, you went and studied at university a little bit later, right? And you、right. first studied science, which is a little bit different to nursing and teaching, perhaps. So, what got you into studying science? <laughs> That, that's a good question. Actually, my parents were both from the science field, right? And some of my Relatives were from the science, like some medical doctors, pharmacists, and so I didn't think too much. But actually, I forgot why I picked the science department. But I thought I would go there. Yeah, I mean, you had a lot of people around you who could probably help you if you needed some extra. Tuition or help with the science part, so maybe it was natural to go to do science. Yeah, that was. I thought、oh. that was kind of. I was born this way, <laughs> <laughs> so I would never imagine I would go to the other department like law or economic. Yes, but you did. You left Chiba University, right? You did biochemistry in the end, I believe. Right, right. And then you joined, of all places, a company that had an IP department. Yes. Tell me all about that. That process of leaving the university and joining a a Japanese company in the IP area. That seems quite different to what you were doing. I'm really in intrigued and curious to know why. Yeah, of course. I didn't want to go to the IP department at all. And、I wanted to be a researcher after graduating the school, you know, because I went to the science department and studied biochemistry. However, to be a researcher, master degree was necessary. But I didn't think I should go to the master course because at that time Japan was in the middle of bubble era. 
and I thought I should join the company before the bubble ends. And while I was talking to the, my first company, and they said, "Oh, we have one post in the IP department." And actually, I didn't know what the IP department was, or even I didn't know what a patent was. But the headquarter of the company is located in Kasumigaseki. That's a nice place to start our career. And then I took a job interview, and then I joined the company. So you chose on the basis of the location. Yeah, <laughs> that's so interesting because it can be both ways. I remember a job coming up that I nearly said no to because of the location. So it's interesting that you chose this particular company because it was it is a great location, isn't it? Great, great. All right. So how did you go with that first job? Join our place of IP department. You you're not even sure what a patent is or. IP, which is intellectual property, which I know you would know very well now. And it's led to your next pathway, right? An interest in IP law. So tell us a bit more about that after you joined. What was it like? Okay, then my first job was a patent search. If a researcher find a new compound, my job is to check if the compound is actually new so i used a computer to retrieve uh, databases that was actually just between here it was boring and i didn't <laughs> like that job <laughs> a little bit like research though maybe so mm, yeah of course interesting okay you did the search of the computer what happened first three years almost every day oh, i wanted to move to the other department but no choice and after maybe six or seven years later sometimes i assisted uh, litigation or some of the dispute to invalidate the other company's patent and that job was actually interesting so at the same time, I had a chance to move to the other group in the same IP department. And I started drafting a patent application and also starting prosecution with the patent office. And then I felt, I don't know why, but I felt a little fun. And after that, our boss told us, if you take a 600 scores in TOEIC, I will uh, move to the U.S. for one month for training. Wow. So your boss said if you get a, a 600 score in the English exam, they'll transfer you to study in the U.S. Yes, it's only one month. Ooh, what an exciting offer. Yeah, that was. So the 600 was <laughs> not an excellent score, but... Some of us were not good at using English. So that was my boss's choice. Ooh. And we studied hard. And three of us took the 600 score. And then, yeah, we stayed in Washington, D.C. for over a month. How was that? I bet that was exciting, like. Being it in was. America, right? Yeah. When you've never been, I believe, overseas before. Had you been overseas before to other countries? Yeah, I've been to the, the, some other countries before, but not on business. And, you know, that was a part of a seminar sponsored by a law firm located in the Washington. Mm. And then the students in the seminar were all Japanese. And that means for the patent farm in D.C., Japanese people are a very good client or a potential client. So every night, one of the law firms, patent farms in Washington, 
treated us or sometimes took us to the shooting or horseback riding. Wow, that's fun. Yeah, that's one that was so fantastic one month, the、yeah. most fantastic one month in my life. I bet. I mean, how exciting to be treated that way and to just see a different side of not only this USA, but different. Different interests and different opportunities and different ways of interacting with the law firm people as well. Yeah, so I made a friends in, in a you know seminar of Japanese people and the American lawyers as well. So after that, my job became dramatically fun, interesting. How? Or why did it become fun? Because it's a different thing to. Do the shooting, horseback riding, and have the seminars, and to link that back to having fun in your job. Why did it become fun? So during the seminars, we students became a very good friend. So I start communicating with some of them from the seminars, and also I made some lawyer friends located in DC. So some of them were our Lawyers, actual lawyers. That means we were a client of them. I、Then、see. After that, I worked with the U.S. lawyers in my job because the patent is always、uh, global, not happening only in Japan. Maybe during the seminars, I understand what a global communication in IP area was. That makes me feeling more fun or interesting、ah, in my job. Right? Yeah, I see what you're saying with the building of the friendships and communicating closely with the U.S. lawyers. You、right. could work out that ah, this area is really quite fun. Yeah, even so, through the、yeah. shooting or horseback riding, <laughs> <laughs> I could understand the, the culture difference or how、mm. you communicate each other. So it was just one month that you were there, but a very, as you said, dramatically changing one, one month of your life. And unfortunately, or fortunately, you had to return <laughs> back to Japan. And what happened then? And then I was more interested in working with foreign colleagues. And next year, I had a chance to visit the Washington D.C. again for a interview with the examiner of the U.S. Patent Office, and that was、uh, September two thousand one. So, can you imagine what happened in that month? Yes, right. Yes, yeah, that happens. The nine one one, and、yeah. I was in Washington D.C. on that day. Goodness me! Yeah, we were. Supposed to have an interview with the examiner、mm. on that day. My goodness, you will never、yeah. forget that that day. And goodness, I don't even want to ask you what happened, but it must have been absolutely traumatic. Yeah, it Again, was. Again, life changing. Yeah, and the, our trip, my trip, was supposed to be just four nights and six days, but I couldn't get back to Japan because. All the airport in the U.S. were closed for maybe a week or ten days. However, we were so scared, and people left from the center of the Washington D.C. But our patent lawyers there treated us very well, and well, they looked after you during that traumatic yes, time. Right, right. That really shows you the. Human side of everybody, right, and especially lawyers in that particular moment. I think coming together was fantastic. I mean, they looked after you because you're displaced from your own country and you're in another country, and this has happened. So while they're probably also very worried about their own families, and they were still able to give you comfort while you、yes. were there,、mm. mm-hmm. and they offered me to use one of The room for work, but at that time, you know, in two thousand one, most of the company employee didn't have their own PC bringing to the abroad, or even we have a PC. I think I had no email interfaces、hmm. in my PC, so 
I communicated with the headquarter in Tokyo over the phone or facsimile. So the patent office offered me to use their room, but I have nothing to do almost. So I just enjoyed、uh, actually shopping and going to the dinner with a lawyer friend or my colleague from Japan. The other thing that is stay,、um, that was kind of tough. That should be tough. But people in the US were so brave, or I shouldn't say they were easy going, but if Japanese people were there, we stopped doing anything. And just to be in the house, not to do anything, and cancel every event. But they continued to do that because we were in a tough situation and then we should do this. That was a definitely a different culture. It's interesting, isn't it? What did that teach you then about yourself being brave through such terrible circumstances? To carry I, on, to keep going, to not let that situation get you down. At that time,、uh, I didn't speak English well, but on the TV, of course, no Japanese subtitles. So I didn't understand well, but I was really focused on it and trying to survive anything happens. So That makes me、uh, stronger and brave.、Mm. I, think. I, th、mm. I think it's, it's difficult to、uh, express. It's hard to express, isn't it? I, th I think of a time in, when I was in Japan, but back in my hometown, there was a terror attack、oh. uh, on some, a couple of mosques. And、oh、yeah, it was pretty tough. But I was due to go out that night to a wine tasting event. And I really didn't feel like it. I was so upset about what happened back in my hometown.、Mm -hmm. But then I thought, almost like your American colleagues, I'm going to be brave. I'm going out because these people, they want you to stop your plans. They want to stop you having joy. They don't want you to be brave. But there you go. And I think that's what your American colleagues were doing. And yourself is actually. Become stronger and braver because it's exactly what you shouldn't do, but you、right. do it. Yeah. So, are you quite a brave person now, still? Yes,、yeah, still. Yeah. How、I、do、think. you show? How do you show this bravery? Or how does it come up for you? What's an example? Yeah, one of the bravest event in my life was start my own firm. Yes, and I want、yes. to talk about that too.、Oh, of course, of course.、Absolutely. And then, so right after that, I experienced a terrorist attack in the US. When I came back to Japan, I became brave and resigned from the first company and then moved to the second one. And after working for the second company、uh, one year and a half, I decided to move to the third company. And then I really enjoyed working with、uh, the colleagues. And in the third company, I had another experience to make me much more brave. The third company was、uh, US Motor Nationals. The headquarter was located in the Middle East of the United States. So, very US centered culture. And up until then, I spoke English a little bit better than before, but not only speaking English, sometimes we could, we means that my American colleagues and I couldn't communicate enough each other. And I found out eventually that was because of the culture barriers. So, not only using English didn't work. And、uh, I had, again, a chance to stay in the US for two months for training. 
during that time, I focused on to talk with my colleagues, not only talking, having lunch and having dinner, going shopping with them, and then tried to understand them and understand their cultures. So after I came back to Japan, my job went well much more than before I stayed in the U.S. So again, I learned overcoming cultural barrier, not only the language barrier, is the most important thing to communicate each other, uh, mm. communicate the global people. Yeah, it's not only the language. You're so right. Some people right. learn the opposite, right? They learn Japanese, but don't always pick up the cultural differences. And that can be yeah. quite different, can't it? What's one thing for you that stood out as a cultural difference between the US and Japan that made you think, oh, this is quite different? What was the major thing? As everything is different, actually. <laughs> oh, communication with lawyers, the conclusion first, then reason. That's yes. the American way. Yes. But in Japan, background, 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 reason, reason, reason. And then where is the conclusion? Yes. That's a big difference. That's a great example. It's so true. And often these days I encourage any Japanese companies or clients I'm working with to put the executive summary at the beginning and then do the rest or do all of the detail but at the end bring that summary up to the top and right. it can be quite uh culturally yes different but i think they um appreciate it in the end because the customer or the client also that they're delivering it to maybe internal a different department or overseas client they get it right because they've got the outcome the conclusion at the top right that's a great example. After I learned about that, I became more brave. And also in that third company, surprisingly, IP people were respected. And so our colleagues, the researchers, r and people counted on us. So that makes me so confident and now I'm so brave and confident. Why not? I should start my own farm. Wow. Then, <laughs> I resigned from the third company <laughs> 10 years ago. Yes, I was going to say happy 10th anniversary to you because Thank you started you. your business April 2013. Yep. 10 years you've been going. You've been going longer than I have in my business. That is just so great. And this is why I wanted to talk with you. One oh, of the reasons. Thank you. But I didn't realize you had so much bravery behind you to oh. enable you to set up your business. But I do know a person who's moved, as I have to know my own business from corporate world, I know it takes a lot of confidence and also risk taking. Maybe of course. a recipe there that the recipe is half confidence and bravery and half risk taking. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. Why then it can't only be bravery. Why you wanted to do it yourself, go out and create your own business. Yeah. In the third company, I became confident. Oh, I knew people wanted an IP professional. Then inside of the large company, so there might be much more people in the world need the IP professionals. So I created IP business consultancy. And firstly, I thought for SMEs, but I worked for three large companies. And then I realized I have no friends in a small companies. And then after I started my on farm, I found, oops, I have no clients in a small company. And also in Japan, at least at that time, the consultant is not a clear job. So first a couple of months, of course, no clients came to me, but 
I wrote Padinatoni on my business card, and then some people came to me asking for a representation of the patent application. However, I wanted to be a consultant to helping mostly SME people, and I didn't want to represent the patent application. So I rejected, I said no for the first two requests. And then my friends, my every friend told me that, are you kidding me? You have no clients. And then someone came to you and then you said, no, oh my goodness, I don't believe it. Yeah, you should take it. Then I took the third client eventually. And at that time, I found out I needed to belong to the patent firm, not the consultancy. So I submitted a paper to the tax office and then also started a patent firm in August the same year. Yes, excellent. How did you figure out that consultancy wasn't the wasn't the form that it was a patent firm that you needed to be as your way of doing your business maybe i i was brave but not so smart maybe <laughs> <laughs> as an entrepreneur oh as we discussed my first uh, job was patent search so the patent search is one of the menu of the ip consultancy and uh, I wrote that in my website, and this was so surprising. But my first client came to us from Nagoya. Mm. He found me on the internet, and he was looking for uh, patent searchers, understanding a pharmaceutical business. And I was so surprised. And he was a very fast client in the IP business consultancy. And the next surprising thing is, oh, I met someone from the Osaka company and she knew my former boss. And then she was interested in my career and we talked for a while. And then eventually she told me, I was so interested in your career and I wanted you to ask something. So could you make some like menus and have a presentation in her company? So I pre prepared materials with five projects, potential projects. And I went there, went to Osaka to present that. And then they picked one of them that was currently called IP English Communication. As I learned how the communication in English between the fallen colleague was difficult. And we need to consider not only the English, but also a cultural difference. And IP people always uh, communicating, working with the fallen colleagues, fallen lawyers, and it's almost every day they are str struggling with how to communicate, how to write an email, how to express what they want to say. So they picked my IP English communication project and we started working together. Wow, that's interesting, isn't it? Because number one, you pitched five projects, not just one or three. That's great to come up with five ideas. And then the one that they choose is probably not the one you thought they would choose. Right. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. But how interesting that that's the area that they needed the help. And so, you know, it's a, an important lesson to know that what you might think is important to people is actually different to sometimes what they need. Right. So you delivered yes. what they needed. 
they had a trouble uh, using English in, in uh, IP work. Actually, we read English every day. We write an English every day. And sometimes we needed to talk with the foreign attorneys in person or over the web conference. They had no chance to find or even they didn't imagine there was some kind of people to teach how to communicate with foreign people by English in the IP field. It's a perfect, right? It's really perfect. And I did some legal communication in English projects for in-house legal teams and mm -hmm. compliance teams. And it was exactly the same. They can learn English by reading a book, right? They can mark up a contract, but how do you negotiate on the telephone or on a conference call or on teams? What are the ways that you break the ice, right, with communication? Because in America, and I'm sure it is in other countries like my own, you have soft talk at the beginning, right, of a conversation right. before you right. dig in to the actual negotiation. So all of that, like you, I've taught that as well. And it can be sometimes surprising what people need and how we need to deliver what they actually need and want. So did that lead you to doing more projects for that Osaka-based client? Mm -hmm. You did more for them? Only the IP English things, right. but we worked together for five years after that. There you go. So you continued doing that project for them, for different staff and different people in the company? Yeah, during the five years, nice. I created and invented that called IP English communication kind of subject. So I talked about that with some people. And then after finishing the contract with the first Osaka company, I still continue doing the same with some other companies. Yes, and I can see that's really good in that maybe it's not filing patents or doing patent searches or litigation, which might be your key area of your work, but this helps you, doesn't it, to understand what are the needs of others that you're going to be working with and learning so much from them, right. from what you teach them. Brilliant. Yes. And I also work uh, for mainly pharmaceutical company in the prosecution or disputes, sometimes the litigations. And that experience could put in the IP English areas. So both career can collaborate or I can use my prosecution experience into the English mm. area. Most definitely. So what did you think would be really hard when you mm -hmm. set up your business, but actually it wasn't as hard as you thought? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was hard. For me, let me tell you my one. For me, it was, oh, how am I going to do invoicing? And how am I going to do accounts? Oh, I don't know how to do that work. But the resolution of that, the way I solved it, was to find the person who could help me do the accounts and to find a person who could help me do my invoices. And then I didn't have to do it. So it became easier for me in that way. So yeah. Do you have some examples like that that help you in your business? In an English area, that was sometimes hard to create a new materials or especially the revision of the letter or emails my students written and then oh i have our english advisor he started helping me maybe uh, five or six years ago and he was originally a my english instructor in my second company so that means he has been my english instructor for more than 20 years almost 20 years and then in an English area, I can work with him and he helped me a lot. And then that makes our IP 
be English communication subject subjects more stronger. Absolutely, I understand that. And would you recommend other women lawyers、mm-hmm. go out and set up their own business? Oh, I don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that answer. There you go. I, why? Why would you not recommend it? I know what's going on in the IP department of the large companies, so it was much easier than now. So, if I would recommend for younger female lawyers to start their own firm, but when I started my business, I was、uh, late forty. So that was hard. Sometimes I felt really hard, physically and mentally. But always, I enjoy my job. So if someone starts their own business, if she's brave, she can do it. So <laughs> if someone wants to start their own business, I would say, okay, just do it. Have fun. So you wouldn't recommend it, but if they're brave, yeah, yeah, go do it. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. That that's all. Okay, my next question is: What have you found is the most important thing that you have learned from your career so far? Yes. Oh, maybe basically to understand what I am doing now. That connect to the client satisfaction. That sounds great. Can you tell me what that means? Can you explain it a little bit more? Okay. So, for example, now I'm. <laughs> Speaking on the podcast, you sure are. So, <laughs> and then in that case, actually, I'm not doing that well. But yeah, we should set or recognize that what is the objective on what I am doing now.、Hmm. So, on the business, for example, we write a an opinion to the client. What is the objective of this opinion? If after I report to the client, how are they going to use your report? And then, before finish the opinion, I should again think about that. So, if I understand what is the goal or objective of this. Opinions, I can finish that in a perfect way, or in a better way, for the client. That's so, an excellent example. Oh, thank you. Now I'm going to ask you: Is there anything else you wanted to tell us about your business? Actually, we focus on three areas, like、uh, business strategy support. Global strategy support and personal development, and business strategy support includes our、uh, patent IP management support, patent search, pharmaceutical business support, and IP business supports for patent firms or vendors, and also、uh, IP prosecution. And global strategy support includes IP English communications, and personal development includes IP education apart from the the English, and also in-house IP education systems. Education system means, for example, for the new employees.、Uh, We should educate a very basic of the IP system, and then the second year employee, the slightly difficult、uh, IP, uh, slightly difficult 
subject. And then for managers or oh, sales and marketing people, maybe from the different aspect, but the company should educate them. That kind of、uh, menu, I called. I called IP education system. So, our third、um, project, I mean, personal development, includes IP education and in house IP create or organize in house IP education systems. Mm, interesting, because I think most IP firms would just concentrate on perhaps the first. Aspect of doing the business strategy support. Support, right. Or maybe the global strategy support. But the personnel development, the personal development, education wise and in house education is quite different as an offering that you've got. So I think、right. it makes you stand out as someone different in the market. I hope so. Yeah, I think that's quite an attractive thing. So people who are needing. That kind of education on IP within the company, probably they don't know where to go to get that. Right. So、I、you can help、so. with that. That's really excellent to know. Thank、And、you. Yeah. Well, how about for people who are just younger lawyers now? If you think about, you've been in business 10 years、mm-hmm. and a lawyer, an IP, you know, a patent lawyer for a long time now. What would you say, though, to those younger people coming out of law school or young lawyers? What would be your good advice for them to think about as they go into their career? I would advise them to learn business. Usually, lawyer like learning law system or the court cases. They love studying that. But I think if working in IP area, learning business is also important. Why is it important? Because IP is always connecting to the business. So if you don't understand the business, you're not going to be able to help the client. Yeah, I think so.、Mm. If lawyers just, yeah, even lawyers focusing on the prosecution, still the outcome of the prosecution that is a patent or trademark always connect to the business. Yes. Absolutely. So, how do you see the future of the legal area in Japan, for example? What do you think might happen in the next five or ten years? Recently, oh, that was actually a good timing question. Have you watched a TV drama named Sore de Pakuri じゃないですか I've heard of it, but I haven't watched it. Sorry. Tell yeah, it's okay. It. Tell me about it. You can see it、uh, Hulu or something, but it's a drama. And、uh, surprisingly, patent attorney in the IP department of the company was starring. Nice. Yeah, that was very first time in Japan. In that company, they have always a trouble relating to patent or trademark. And a problem happened in the drama was mostly like actually happening in the IP department of the company in Japan. So, what I want to say is that kind of drama eventually on air, that means Japanese people now care about IP. So, in the past, the normal people don't know patent attorney. In Japanese, benrishi. People know attorney at law, bengoshi. People know bengoshi, but nobody knows benrishi. But thanks to that drama, for now in Japan, maybe some people know the word benrishi. So that means IP mind, legal mind in Japan would be improving and the field. The lawyer could work will be broaden.、Mm, I understand what you're saying. It's interesting, isn't it, to have the Ben Lishi, the IP lawyer feature as the main character in a drama. 
that's right. quite revolutionary. And yes, I'm it sure is. it's going to increase the interest in that area. It seems that something like that happens in Japan in a drama. It does encourage people to do that profession or get at least curious about that yeah, profession. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay then, Yasko, let's head down to the last part of the podcast. I'm going to ask you a few questions to wind up. Okay. So tell me, what is your favorite Japanese food and where can you buy that? I like actually soba. Oh, yes. And we have a nice restaurant at the first and second floor of the building our farm is located. It's called Soba and Co. Soba and Co. That's great. And I was going to ask you about your favorite drama on TV, but I know the answer to that now. So what do you find is your favorite book that you've recently read or maybe another podcast that you are listening to? The podcast I found recently was yours. <laughs> and of course. And the book, it's a Japanese book. Hmm. The title is a bit long, but it's Shinbun wa Kangaeru Buki ni naru, written by Akira Ikegami. Do you know him? No, I don't. And is Buki a weapon? Yes, right, right. So the newspaper can be a weapon. A weapon to... for thinking. Right, that mm. is correct. Interesting. Gosh, sounds interesting. What is something about you that a lot of people do not know? Okay, people don't know. I am obsessed about yoga. Yes, <laughs> that's it. No, yeah, that's a very simple. <laughs> very that's good. Right. And one last question. If you could spend time with some other person, a famous person or someone from history, mm -hmm. who would that be? Oh, someone from history. So I would choose Tokugawa Ieyasu. Oh. Because, you know, it's the NHK drama is on air now. And I've been watching that. And then now I'm really interested in him. Hmm. You could ask him lots of curious questions. Right. Yeah. He was basically located in, in Shizuoka, then came up to Edo, like that. Indeed. He came Edo, Tokyo, right? And did all kinds of things mm -hmm. to shape the, the future of Japan. Right. Yes. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Yasuko. We've come to the end of our chat today. I thank you so much for being very brave and coming on the Lawyer On Air podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it today. That's great. And if people would love to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Would that be through LinkedIn? Yeah, perhaps? of course. Yeah? Okay. Well, we'll put your LinkedIn link. Oh, thank <laughs> profile, you. The link to your <laughs> right. profile in okay. the show notes and people can get in touch with you if you like. And if you've listened to this episode and you loved how uh, Yasko told you how brave she is and what she told us around that. We would love to hear from you if you have a review to leave for the podcast. You can leave that on Apple or on Spotify, or you can even jump over to my podcast page and there's a place there where you can leave a voice message as well. That's all for now, everyone. Thanks so much. See you on the next episode. Cheers, come pie, and bye for now. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening today to this episode of Lawyer On Air. I really hope that you were inspired by the story you heard and that you discovered something new about women in the law. Please subscribe to the show so that you don't miss future episodes. And if you can think of even just one person to share this episode with, that would make my day. I invite you to connect with me to talk more. Jump on over to LinkedIn or Instagram where you can find me or send me a message via my website contact page. That's all from me today. I look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Lawyer On Air. Cheers, come pie, and bye for now.